Hi everyone, this is Wilson and I'm here today to play a great game from Drew Chamberlain. It's a print and play game that I got off of Board Game Geek and it's called Delve. Delve the Dice Game. In this game you play the ubiquitous four, it's a dungeon crawl, and you play the four characters that might normally be associated with this kind of a game. A cleric, a wizard, a rogue, and a fighter. Let me show you those guys now. Here's the cleric, he has three life, and the cleric rolls straights. We're going to get to the mechanic here in a minute, but we roll dice, and when the cleric rolls um, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, he's able to do certain levels of healing. And he has three life, represented by these three shields. Here's the wizard, who's very powerful, but only has one life. The wizard also has three different kinds of spells, and he achieves those by getting of a kind whether that be four of a kind, five of a kind, or six of a kind. His spells are called Fireball, Chain Lightning, and the best one of all is Demise, if you get six, six of a kind. This is the Rogue, and I think it's a young lady. I uh, can't be sure. The Rogue has uh, three lives, as represented by those three shields. The Rogue has something called a Sneak Attack that enables her to get one hit um, on an opponent for every one that is rolled on the dice. She also has something called a crippling strike, which in my imagination is something where she leaps from the shadows and does sort of an assassination move. If we get a full house, the sixth die that we roll is the amount of damage the crippling strike will cause. And finally we have the fighter. The fighter is of course the tank of the gang. Six lives here. Um, he's a bit of a brute. Basically, every time he rolls a six, he can do one damage. And he can do those damage to anybody he wants. Compared to, or in contrast to the rogue, if the rogue rolls five ones, she can do five damage to a single opponent, whereas the fighter can do damage to more than one opponent, which would actually be two, because only two sixes can count, but those each one of those sixes can be an attack or a hit, as it were, on any character that we are opposing. Here's what the game board looks like. Basically, this is the first print and play that came out of the, uh, uh, I think it's a bit of a set. You get these rules, so there's the rules, and that's it. I mean, there's not much more to it than that. You need a play sheet, you need six six-sided dice, and sometimes you need a pencil to keep track of things. That's about it. Very, very straightforward. So as the heroes, re that is representing the heroes in this solo game, I will roll six dice for them, and they go first. And then I get to manipulate those six dice however I want to by setting some aside and re-rolling others. And I can roll this set of six dice, or anything up to six of those six dice, three times. You'll see that again and again and again. And what we do is we progress through here. Now this particular quest has some nice artwork. So it's laid out well. And I know there was some conversation on Board Game Geek with some of the other quests. In fact, there's only two or three quests, some of them are fan-made even, where there actually is artwork. Um, because you don't need it. Uh, there's actually a series of quests, I think there's four. They have, they just kind of written down. So there's like one, two, three, four. And you just sort of follow along line for line. In this case here, it's kind of a little bit more thematic, right? A little bit more to it. So we're going to follow this path here, the orcs and so forth, and we're going to move and make our way down here to the final confrontation against the dragon and see if we can win. Now bear in mind that I usually do win this game, um, but not always. And also, you don't need all the characters to successfully make it to the end in order to win. You just need one character to make it to the end. And so there's a tiny bit of strategy involved in that. And obviously there's some choice that you make along the way. But all that said, everything depends upon what you roll. So the degree of luck is high, but in the same respect, you will have to make choices according to what you've rolled. These little chibi dice give pretty good contrast. So I'm just gonna roll um, using these guys. Well, let's have a look at our first our first situation. First. One final thing before we get started. The angle isn't great. Um, maybe I'll find a better way to represent these, but um, our lives are here. The six is our fighter. 
the three is our rogue, this three is um, the um, uh, cleric, and this one, I didn't have another one of these unfortunately, but that's okay, this one is our magic user. And so I'm going to keep those red dice set aside and I'll just move them accordingly. You know, whatever's on top is however many lives that particular character will have instead of writing something down. And so here's our first battle. We have to combat three orcs. Now the orcs themselves have two life each and every time they roll their six dice they will hit on a five or a six. Now keep in mind whereas the heroes get to roll their six dice three times each time pairing that down and selecting and setting aside the dice they like, the orcs, or any other monster for that matter, only rolls their set of dice um, once, and they have to pick from that, and that's the end of their combat phase. So let's go ahead and roll. All right, these are my characters here, and these are the orcs here, each with two life. So we're gonna go first, let's see what we get. All right, we're doing well. We actually have some healing in there with our, our uh, potential healing with our three, four, five. I'm gonna set aside the two ones and I'm gonna re-roll these, four. Not like that, there we go. Okay, this time I'm gonna keep my ones. You can move the ones back and forth. There's nothing that's written in stone here. So I'm gonna keep my ones and I'm going to keep this six as well. So that's going to be one orc essentially dead with the thief and the, with the two ones and the fighter also has one hit coming. And let's see if we can get another six. A one won't do me any good. And that's exactly what I got. Now, there is something else here. This, the crippling strike is available to me as well because you can see we've rolled a full house. And so six would be the amount of damage we could cause to one enemy, but that doesn't do as much overall damage. That works for big things like the giants or the, you know, the big single enemies, dragons. But I'm going to use two hits from the thief and I can't use that one. So we set it aside. I can't use the threes. So it is as I said. So that basically kills this guy and moves this guy down to one. And now with their attack, the orcs will roll three dice, you see, one, two, three. And they hit on a five or a six, and they have missed altogether. So it's my turn again, six dice. Okay, I've got one, two, three ones. I'm gonna set all three ones aside and re-roll these three. Well, we're kind of falling into the same sphere as last time. I've basically won here. I don't even need to roll a third time because you can see what we've got. We've got two ones that we can use to take out this orc. And we've got one six that we can use to take out this orc. So that's it. We've progressed beyond the orcs and now we're on to our second encounter. For our second encounter, we have to take on 12 kobolds. The kobolds each have one life of their own, so there's a lot of them, certainly, so it's a bit overwhelming, but they only hit on a six. So depending upon what we're able to do in terms of attack here, um, they may or may not be a big problem. Okay, the kobolds are still represented by, this time, by little glass beads. There's 12 of them, since I don't have to count down their life. If they take one damage, they're dead. So there's 12 beads representing the 12 kobolds. Here's my life up here. Fighter, uh, rogue, cleric, magic user, and they're all in good shape. So I roll my six dice. And let's see what we can do. We've got two fives, two twos, a three, and a one. I'm going to keep the two fives. Okay. I have four fives and two fours. The four fives alone, after my second roll, allows me to activate the wizard's fireball because it's four of a kind. And what the fireball does is one damage to each opponent or four damage to a single opponent. And so you can see that what I've done is with the fireball, I have done one damage to each of the 12 kobolds, thus killing every one of them. 
The fireball can be very handy that way um, when you face that kind of an opponent. And so we move on. This time we face a monstrous spider and she can be tricky. Uh, it's not only her, it's her three offspring. And you can see the monstrous spider herself has three life and the offspring each have two. Now on their roll, they're gonna hit me on a five or a six, which is fine, that makes them strong enough, but they also stun me. They must have some sort of poison or something. And so if they roll a one, they will stun one of the heroes of my choice. And that's fine. It means that I can't attack with that hero again, even though I can take damage from those heroes, and that helps spread things out. However, if they roll enough ones and they stun all of my heroes, and again, I attack first. The spiders represented, here are my heroes, and the spiders represented by this three. That's the monstrous spider, and these two are each of her monstrous offspring. Well, I guess they're not monstrous. <laughs> they're simply her offspring. All right, so let me roll six dice. You can see how the fireball won't be as effective here, but it's still a possibility. Okay, I'm going to keep things pretty straightforward here. I'm gonna choose the one and the six to set aside. I got another one. I'm just gonna play this pretty straight up. Hope for some sixes. I didn't get the sixes. I didn't get that. That's okay. All right. So the thief can apply the three, the, his three hits, or I guess her three hits, to the actual monstrous spider and kill her. So she's she's defeated. Then the fighter, the two and the four, I won't be able to use. But the fighter's hit can be against one of the offspring, bringing them down to five. Which means for their attack, I remove one die and they will roll, will roll five dice. Now remember, a five or a six gives me a hit, but a one is a stun. Okay, so they got one hit, so I'm gonna put that one hit on my fighter. So my fighter's life is presently down to five, and they've also stunned me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that stun and I'm gonna put it up against my healer. Okay, actually I guess you can't see that very well. Let me use a green a green token right there. Get some separation. There you go. So this character of mine, the healer, the cleric, is stunned. Now, in this situation, I don't roll any less or fewer dice than I have previously. I still roll six dice. It wouldn't matter if I was coming up against, uh, excuse me, if I had one character left or not, I, I would still be rolling six dice. It's just that now, because my healer is stunned, I can't activate any actual healing. All right, we have two twos and two fives. None of that is enough to convince me to keep it. I'm going to hold on to the six and I'm gonna go at this rather slowly. Once again. Okay, so I've got three sixes. I'm gonna keep all three. The fighter can't use a third hit, but if I get a fourth six, then I do manage to do some significant damage by a fireball. Okay, I didn't get that. Now, I don't wanna do a crippling strike either um, from the thief because that will only lead to one damage. You can see after the full house, I only have one damage. So my best bet is to count two sixes for the fighter and one for the thief. So the fighter can destroy this offspring and the thief can destroy this offspring leaving only two life on the one remaining offspring. Who gets to roll two dice? Rolls a one and a three, so putting up a good fight for sure. Let's put that over with my wizard. My wizard is now stunned, and it's up to my thief and my fighter to finish off the offspring. And they have done it. So, using the one and the six, I, I've done enough to kill the spider. However, I'm not gonna end my turn. I'm gonna try for a little bit of luck here. You can see what we have is a one, two, four, five. I'm gonna take out the one and I'm gonna keep the two, four, five. And if I can roll a three, my, oh, you know what? It's not gonna matter. I'll do it just for fun. It's a four and it's a five. I didn't do it anyway. What I was trying to accomplish was to get some healing for my fighter but that doesn't matter. I can't do it anyway because my, uh, my healer, my cleric is out of commission. He's stunned. Although after these two hits, this offspring is dead, 
we've cleared the area and these two stun tokens actually come off now. So we're actually doing pretty well for this point in the game. The next thing we encounter is a treasure chest. And all you do here is you roll one D6 and that D6 will determine which of these you get to have. Now some of these are good things, but not all of them. So let's have a roll. I'll just roll and you can take my word for what I'm doing here. I rolled a four. So a four is a holy symbol and the holy symbol requires the cleric, which we have. We rolled a four. So the holy symbol is now the clerics because it requires a cleric. What the holy symbol does is when we face skeletons, we will only require one damage to kill them. So we'll see what that means in a little bit. But now that we have the holy symbol, um, we have a slight advantage going further and deeper into the dungeon. The next character we face is the giant. He has nine life. That's okay. Uh, he's pretty strong. He's pretty daunting. And he also hits on a four, five, or six. So he's powerful. He's powerful. He's, he's muscular. Um, he can't be trifled with. So we need to do something to take him out quickly if possible, uh, which I suppose would be you know, self-evident for any one of these monsters. But what I want to do in particular here is I want to hope that I can roll a full house and maybe get a crippling strike right off the top from the thieves abilities. All right, you can see that I'm down one hit on the fighter still, but I'm all right. I'm not too concerned about that. Here's the life of the giant. He's got five and four for a total of nine life. Let's roll and let's see what we can do. Well, you can see how this little guy's hung up a little bit in the corner, but I think that's a three. And here, this is exactly what I want it to be. So we've got three threes and two fives, which is a full house. And the remaining die is a six. That means that we, we do succeed. I, I haven't set this up. You guys saw me roll. This does succeed as a crippling strike, which means we have hit the giant. The uh, thief, the rogue, has jumped out of the shadows and slashed at his neck for some critical damage, or at least some pretty bad damage. Six damage, in fact. And so we remove those six. We remove five and one. He only has three life remaining. What that means is he will roll three dice. Remember, he's still a very formidable opponent because he can succeed with a roll of a four, a five, or a six. And he didn't get any of those things. We are doing very, very well here today. All right, back to my roll. So I have, that was a six. It just fell over when I was moving it. So I have two sixes and I have three, four. So I can go three, four, five, six to get a little bit of healing. That will heal me fully and then, so I'll set that aside, and I'll set the six aside, and I'll re-roll one die. It's a three, I'll roll it again, and it's a one. So I can use the six and the one for an attack of two on the giant, bringing him to one life left, and I can use the three, four, five, six for some healing. I actually can heal two, but all I need is one, and that brings my hero party up to full strength. Now the giant has one more attack left before I'm sure we will destroy him. And he missed again. So this giant is well and addled. He's not able to land on us at all. We roll a six, a one. There's plenty there. I don't need to heal anymore. We've defeated the giant. We've just killed the giant off right here. We've come this way and now we're gonna reach some undead. This is where our holy symbol is really gonna come into effect here that the cleric has. We're gonna meet up with six skeletons in this area. The skeletons will hit with a five and a six, which makes them significantly dangerous enough. They each have one life. However, as undead, you'll see there that it says it takes two damage to inflict on a single round. Excuse me, let me reread that. It takes two damage inflicted in a single round to kill a skeleton. So even though the skeleton, one skeleton, him or herself, only attacks with one die and hits on a five or a six, unless I get two hits on that skeleton, it will regenerate. So a single hit to a skeleton is no good to me. However, 
you will recall the holy symbol. And so my skeletons are each represented by one token because they will only be able to take one hit of life or one point of damage, put it that way. My heroes are at full strength and so we shall roll. All right. All right, I don't know what to do here. Um, I could go for some magic, but it's a bit risky. Um, you know what, let's do it. Let's go for some magic. Let's keep the threes aside. I had to pick the threes over the fours, so come on three. Haha, <laughs> looks like four was the way to go. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pick the three four, and I'm gonna re-roll these three on my third roll. Oh, I didn't get it. Okay. Well, the only damage I have here is one. Whether I should choose the Thieves' Crippling Strike or I should just choose the Fighter's normal basic attack. Either way, one skeleton is dead. That means the skeleton, I remove one die, they roll five, because there's five of them, and they'll hit on a five or a six. They got three hits on me. That's pretty good. I'll take all three off of my Fighter and we will move on to my turn. This is no time to be taking a lot of damage just before I'm at the end here. So hopefully we can deal with this. All right, I think I'm gonna try this again. I have three fours. I'm gonna re-roll the other three dice. Well, we're doing the same thing as last time, but I don't want to do the same thing as last time. Come on, four. Oh, I got it, okay. So, let's do it this way. The one from the thief will kill one more skeleton. So there's four left. But once again, the wizard, with the four of a kind, activates the fireball, and with one damage each, thanks to the combination of that and the holy symbol, eliminates all of the skeletons. And so now, we move on to the final phase, the final dungeon, the final room, the final encounter. We're about to take on the dragon, who will also hit on a 5 or a 6. The dragon's the strongest enemy we've faced yet in the sense of its life. It has 15 shields there, so 15 life. You may also be able to make out some of the script below that says that the dragon will roll 6 dice all the time. So whether it has the full 15 life or it's down to 2 or 1 lives, it will roll 6 dice. So its attack is fairly powerful, even when it's wounded. Let's have a go. Once again, you can see that my party is slightly wounded. The fighter has three life left out of his six, but the others are all at full strength. The dragon has 15, as represented right here by the white dice. We get to go first once again. Let's see what we can do. All right, we've got three ones, which I'm definitely gonna set aside. A six, a two, and a five. I'm going to re-roll these three and keep the three ones. I am going to roll all three of those again. Alright, so I did get the full house. I did get the crippling strike. However, with only two damage, I'm much further ahead just to do the original three from the thief. And so that's going to move the dragon down three lives to twelve. Dragon's turn to attack us. Rolls all six dice. Hitting on a five or a six, we can see that the dragon has only succeeded in one hit. I will once again take that from my fighter and move him down to two life. And it becomes our turn again. Okay, this one looks like a five. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my sixes aside there's two of those, and you know what? I'm just gonna re-roll this and see what that gets us. Well, 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 okay. We have four fives and two sixes. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna count these as two attacks from two different characters. We're gonna take the two sixes, and those will be two hits from our fighter's basic talent. And then we're gonna activate the fireball from the wizard on one opponent, which does four damage. So that's gonna knock this down from a five to a one. So the dragon 
has six life remaining. I could have held on and tried another roll and tried for a more effective magic attack. Probably be good to show you one of those, but I, you know, I just want to win the game, to be honest with you. So the dragon attacks us, succeeds with a hit on a five. So I will once again move the life of the fighter down to a single life remaining. Let's see where we can get now. Our attack. Well, the fighter's gonna lash out in anger after being hit. Now I could do some healing here. I've got three, four, five, six. Um, but instead, actually, you know what? I think I may, I think I may actually just leave it like that. Let's do some healing. Three, four, five, six, I'm gonna take as two healing from the cleric, which will move my one up to three. And I'm gonna take these two hits, one basic from the fighter and one basic from the thief. So that's two hits on these six, which moves the dragon down to four life. So she is almost defeated, but she does attack again. Will hit on a five or a six. Wow, that was a bit bigger. Three hits, two fives and a six. So one, two, three. I have that right, I believe. So my party is a little more wounded than previous, but we're getting close to the end if we can just finish this off. Boy, I've got some good healing. One, two, three, four, five. Um, okay, that's actually, that's actually called heal. It's a spell the cleric has, and it allows us to heal the amount on the sixth die. And if that sixth die is a one, then we heal all living party members. So we could do uh, two, three, four, five, and just heal two points, keep the one as an attack, and re-roll this. I think I'll do that. Let's just see where that gets us. Okay, it's a three, that's not helpful. And it's a six. Okay, so I have some options here. I can heal everyone fully, or I can do two damage to the dragon and heal two points. I think I'll do that. I think I'll do two damage to the dragon, and I think I'll heal two points. So my fighter goes from one to three. The dragon is slowly, we're slowly piercing the dragon's armor, but the dragon still has a fierce attack and levies three hits with a five, five, six. So once again, two from the fighter, one from the thief. It's come down to this. What I feel is probably our last attack, wounded though we may be. Well, I've got healing. Should I try for a crippling, uh, a crippling strike from the thief? I'll try. Okay, I've got that. I've got the full house. Three fours and two threes, but I'm only doing one damage. I need to do something better than this one. Anything. And it's a five. So my thieves' crippling strike, sort of assassination move, has done five damage to the dragon who only has two life left to offer. And so the dragon is finished. Well, we won the game. We took a little bit of damage. Our fighter ended up with one life. Our rogue also ended up with one life. Our cleric was at full life and so was our wizard. And we didn't seem to have too, too much challenge this go around. Sometimes I just don't win the game. So I don't know if this looked overly easy to you or not. We did get pretty lucky, um, but you know what? You don't always win. The thing I really, really like about this game is its portability. This is just a sheet of paper. I just have this mounted for the sake of the video. This thing can be folded up and put in your pocket. I've played this in restaurants, at donut shops. I've played this in the car waiting for my wife. I've played this in the morning before I get to work for 10, 15 minutes, uh, probably more like 10. You can do this anywhere. You can do this over lunch break. You can do this on a plane. It's inobtrusive. If you bring a couple of dice, heck, you can even just use an app, right? You can use a dice roller app and you can have complete sort of quiet as long as you have this piece of paper. You can play almost anywhere. Actually, there is a Delve app, but I find I, I just like the tactile feel of actually having the paper and the artwork and stuff with me. So what do I think of this game? I think I've made that pretty clear. I enjoy this game. In fact, this is a game I play an awful lot of, even for all its simplicity. 
My intent here with this video is to set the stage with this first one because I made adaptations. I do, I have some house rules and I'm going to create, I'm going to play another scenario, a different scenario with a bit of a twist. Okay. And I'm going to start to evolve this game a little bit the way, um, it doesn't need any evolution, but I'm going to evolve a little bit how I feel comfortable. So I'm going to show you another video following this one. It'll be up in a, a little bit and it's going to show the evolution of my characters. And then I'm going to do another video after that. And I'm going to show you an evolution of movement. It's a movement mechanic that I've added in. And I think that's about as far as I've taken the game. So I've got three different levels of complexity that this game can offer. I should also point out that some of the other modules or quests or whatever these things are called, they actually come with different characters. So you don't have to play cleric, wizard, rogue, and fighter. There's barbarians, there's necromancers, uh, there's paladins, all that kind of stuff. In fact, there's, there's a whole character sheet, once again, that you can print out from the files on Board Game Geek. So I would point you there for sure to go and have a look at this. This is a great game. Enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It can be, it, it doesn't have color. It doesn't have a lot of action. All you get to see is my hand and some dice. Nevertheless, if you're wondering about Delve, the dice game, um, that's how it's played. And I enjoyed showing you. So for now, this is Wilson signing off. Cheers.